it's five o'clock my time and it is letting me go live which is very very exciting <laughs> even more so uh, i am in i am in meeting room c because it's sunday so uh, i've managed to come in and actually get some space uh i know that uh facebook is going to be popping up saying laura's live laura's live so uh i don't want to jump in straight away um, but if, uh, if anybody is here, give me a wave and, uh, and send me a comment and you can just put, oh, hi, I'm here. And, uh, and of course, if you are watching this on the replay, just do me a little hashtag replay because uh, it's nice to know. Um, and uh, I can tell you that there are a few people in, uh, so you know that I come to a place called The Hive, which is office, uh, it's office spaces in a part of District 2 called Taodian or Taodian. I can't say it properly yet. <laughs> and um, yeah, we call it the hive. It's just these big old spaces that uh, people just, all kinds of people with all kinds of jobs come in and you can have your own desk or you can hot desk and uh, of course you can book the meeting room. And, uh, and I have fully traumatized two Vietnamese, uh, I don't know, co-workers, I suppose I can call them because I just made a cup of tea about half an hour ago and it was English breakfast tea, which I don't normally drink, but I felt like it. And we have our own fridge, if you remember. So you can pay day by day. Hello, everyone. Um, you can pay day by day or you can pay memberships. And I have a membership, which means I have the right to put my milk in the fridge. And uh, so I made this cup of tea whilst another couple of people were there sifting through the Oreo snacks. And then I poured milk in it and uh, yeah, the people who were there were just like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm British, I'm British. Okay, so I think I can see at least a couple of people are here, so hello. Um, today, excuse me, sorry. <coughs> today, um, I know I mentioned this before, it's, it feels like a really important one. I mean, they're all important trainings, but this was brought about by a friend of mine who is a nurse and she's currently in uh, in a &E, so accident and emergency and she has a young boy of course he's growing and growing and growing which is awesome and slightly terrifying that he's you know you know when you think they're so small and you turn around and they're like eight crazy and and she was talking about you know, how, how do I deal with his anxiety? Because I go to, you know, a highly stressful job. And of course, once I mention this, other friends who are doctors, firefighters, nurses, anybody on the front line really are saying the same thing. You know, how do I deal with the anxiety? Because the thing that's stressing my kid out is my job. And the way for me to stop that feels like, might not necessarily be, but it feels like if I said, okay, I won't go to work anymore, that they wouldn't be anxious anymore because they are, you know, not sleeping because I'm on the night shift and they know, you know, although I don't work on COVID wards, I'm in a hospital. What do I do? Because if you're called, if you're called to help people, if you're called into the medical profession, if you are called to be fire and rescue, if you're called to be in the military and protect people, you are. <laughs> and and of course, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really think that your children would be happy if you said, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna be a nurse or a doctor. Oops, I'm not gonna help people. I'm just, I'm gonna stay at home. And it may feel like that is the answer, but of course it's not because you have to be true to yourself and you know anxiety runs deeper than this so i've put together some some thoughts and you'll see that i've also put uh, an infographic just printed so it makes it easier for me to not mess about um so you know what i do is called i call it the after and it, it's about the reason i called it the after is because we you know we humans, we society, sometimes we have really horrible times and there is an after, there is something that comes after it and I want to be a voice of hope and science and rigour but hope, there is an after. So I am going to talk through this in, a, ooh, that's harder, <laughs> I'm going to talk through this in, uh, in a few minutes 
And I, I've just put it, when I actually can get back into my group, because I'm having Facebook hilarities again, uh, when I can actually get back into the group, it will go into the guides and so will this video. So this is my how to support your child through anxiety, um, AFTER acronym, which has been collated from reading from so many different sources, because that's what I do. So what is anxiety? It's really an important question that we often don't, because uh, colloquially we're like, oh yeah, I'm a bit anxious today. Oh yeah, no, no, I think my kid is feeling anxious. And, and we actually need to think before we even get into it, well, what does that mean? So my understanding of anxiety is that, you know, we all sometimes feel stressed out about stuff. You know, say you've got an exam, you're going to be anxious before it. I remember my driving test, I was a bag of nerves before it both of them and you know that's normal that's part of life if you've got a big presentation to give you're going to be a bit nervous your first day of school you're going to be a bit nervous especially right now because this is another thing that made me think things are changing certainly in the UK and even in Vietnam the children are back in tomorrow which is uh, Monday the 1st of March after so they had two weeks with the tech holiday but the week before and the week after either side was online learning because there was a spike in cases, so the government responded. So the children and the young people going back into school, college, whatever, and the grown-ups going back to work are going to be feeling anxious. Now, there's there's your normal worries of like, oh, it's my first day at work, oh, I've got something to you know to present, oh, I'm a bit nervous. And then there's, you know, when it, it tips into, this is what we're talking about now, it tips into you know that longer term feeling of bubbling anxiety that is always always there always present and we're just not able to you know it's, it's always keeps coming back and it's become a feature of our landscape of our lives and this is go you know going from oh I've got, I'm a bit worried about you know I'm slightly anxious about this thing I'm doing short term finished done back to normal whatever normal is and I am feeling consciously rolling anxious. Now, note here, which is something I say to you know, any clients as well that, that book with me, we always talk before we book. If it is tipping over into, I feel anxious all the time and there are very few moments of joy, I can't cope, I can't get out of bed, this is the time when you really need to go and see a GP. You need to go see you know, a counsellor or you know go and talk to a friend or a family member who can support you in getting help because it may be that this anxiety we're actually going to talk about this in a minute maybe it's a sign that there is something going on you know, some imbalance or or even things like vitamins i have a, a very good friend who was felt that she was teetering on depression years ago now and she went into she went into the doctors and they did a blood test and it was vitamin d <laughs> it was vitamin d and then they gave her some really high doses uh, that i wouldn't recommend taking unless a doctor prescribed it she took some really high doses you know did some other things as well some talking and 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 i don't know if it was formal therapy but you know talking it through and and she was back on an even kill quite quickly now if it is something like a vitamin D or, or you know, a serotonin deficiency or you know, something that requires medical input, it's not going to get better on its own with these kind of methods. That's the caveat to what I'm saying. And only you and only your family or the people around you, only you can really decide that. So if you, if you try some of these things and maybe they don't work or if hope is becoming less and less a feature of your life and joy and happiness is not just like oh the world's a bit crap right now struggling if, it, if it's more than that I implore you please go and see someone it's what they're there for it's really it's truly what they're there for it's what they get up in the morning for to help people you are not causing any burdens or any problems please seek help so that's you know that one side and then there's the oh I'm a bit worried about this thing tomorrow oh I'm okay now oh glad I did it and then we're kind of in that middle, in that in that spot of, oh, there's something just playing on my mind all the time and it's making me feel, oh. So anxiety, certainly with children, as it plays out, and this applies to adults as well, to be honest. 
three ways of really, really being able to recognize it is the physical and thoughts and feelings. Many of us can relate to this, the, the tummy ache, oh, I've got a tummy ache, I can't do PE today. Oh, you know, oh, I feel poor, or, or being really, really hot. So things like, you know, when your body, you know, the old stomach ache, I, I think most children have come up with that. Or, and, and they really do have a stomach ache because they're anxious. Um, or, you know, having a headache, aches and pains in the body because of being tense all the time, it causes aches and pains. And, um, and sometimes it can express physically through things like IBS, like irritable bowel syndrome, or, you know, children suddenly getting diarrhea and, you know, they're not sick, they don't have a stomach bug. It's anxiety working, you know, through their body. So we have physical signs, physical manifestations, and um, so thoughts. Again, this works for grown-ups. The intrusive thought, this is never going to get better. I'm never going to be good at this. Uh, I can't do this. This is awful. These kind of thoughts and being swamped by intrusive thoughts keep coming back. Now, we're not going to know if our children are having those thoughts, so we need to be creating an environment, which, you know, which is this, which I'm going to talk about, where they can talk to us. Uh, and feelings. Feelings is really interesting and in my group, which is uh, the After Conscious Community, I can still let you in by the way if you try and join it, and in the, uh, it's called Guides Now, there is a, a resource there, there's a video and a PDF resource, I think it's two pages long, to help children understand their feelings. I won't waffle on about it because you can go and find it if you want. So feelings. Now, most of us adults, mostly, when we are feeling something, we can express it with words. I'm feeling angry, I'm feeling upset, I'm feeling exhausted, I'm feeling dejected, because we understand all of these shades of meaning. Children, especially younger children, but even for any age, you know, even teens, we have our, our feelings and our ability to name feelings and identify what is going on inside us is clouded by hormones. And you know, for young children, it's cloud, but it's not even clouded. They just don't have the vocabulary for it. So they might be swept along by these feelings and they don't know what it is. And that in itself is scary, which is why in this resource in the guides, uh, it's, it helps talk about what these feelings are so that then you as uh, you know the grown-up when they're you know throwing stuff and displaying signs of anger you could say oh you're feeling really angry right now and I teach this in in my program as a conflict resolution technique because quite often just saying oh you're feeling really angry that that just happened or oh you're really frustrated because your tower just fell down you spent ages working on it Sometimes that is genuinely enough, and they go, oh yeah, I am. And then they carry on, because naming the feeling takes the, the scariness away, because they know what it is. And moreover, this is a lot of what we're going to talk about in the next few minutes. They know that you've seen them, they know that you've heard them, and that way of saying, oh, you're feeling really is a way of you accepting them and validating their experience. So they might well be throwing something around because they're really angry and you saying, oh, you're feeling really angry right now because your brother took your toy, real life example. It, it, it's no judgment. And they can actually, because they're not being judged by us, going, oh, you put that down, stop throwing that, which, of course, is probably what we want to do. And then when we take our deep breath, we can go, okay, it's not about me, although I am really frustrated with that, I will shelve this for later on. What's going on with my kid? What do they need from me right now? Oh, man, you are feeling really angry. I can tell by the way that you are throwing that. And then you can get involved. And by not 
introducing the element of shame step to the chair for ensures by not introducing that that element of shame or or anger from us and just explaining what's going on we dissipate so much of the tension it's very very powerful feeling heard now we know this as adults feeling heard is the crux of connection if we want connected families this is this is how we do it we hear each other, we listen to each other, and we love each other. Doesn't that sound simple? Of course it is, never that easy. So it's about, when we're going back to anxiety, this is about us knowing for ourselves, like I said, it works for us and for children and young people, and also teaching them your emotions, your feelings are a sign. There's no bad feelings. There's no negative and no positive. I mean, some things are more desirable to feel than others. I mean, that's, you know, if you had a choice, do you want to feel joyful or do you want to feel dejected? It's really obvious what we would go for. However, this is life and sometimes you will feel down and you can say, okay, look, you're feeling anxious right now. I can see by the way you're acting. I think that you, you're feeling anxious. Now, you can use this as a way for you to learn about yourself. This is, you know, honor their feelings. And I implore you for you too, if you feel like this, honor your feelings and just think, right, this is a sign that something's not right. And when we teach our children as they, you know, of course they're gonna grow, we teach them feelings are a clue to something not being right. Or, you know, of course it can be a clue, oh, that makes you really happy. Oh, we should do more of that. You know, this is how we teach them, a lot of what I teach, to to learn about their authentic selves, to understand who they are. And then they can better control their own lives. And it means that we don't have to, as adults, step in so often and take control for them. Because, of course, nobody really wants to do that. But sometimes as parents feel that we need to. So we empower them to see their anxiety is a sign and it's something for them to listen. And then we teach our children that they can be intuitive and that that is powerful. So we give them power. What better way out of anxiety than turning it into a power? It's amazing. So um, immediately, I've got one, two, three, four, five. So say your child is, um, so five methods for calming down so that you can talk. Because, I mean, we know this ourselves. When we're really, really stressed out, somebody going, calm down. I mean, anybody who's married, somebody saying, calm down. What does it do? Of course, we just explode. Don't say that. <laughs> Please, somebody teach your job not to say that to me. So yeah, when we're feeling stressed out, we're not in a place to talk it through. So we need to... I was going to say get our child to a point, but actually that's not true. We need to support our child to get to a point where they are able to talk. Now, it might not be at that time. And if you're seeing them bunched up, or if you're seeing them just go and explode, or if you're seeing them throw things, or just be very, very upset, or, you know, colour in in circles and be really, really angry, they might not, within the next five minutes, be able to be calm. You might have to... And I find this hard too as a parent and from when I was uh, teaching in the classroom and young offending, it, it's hard because we just want to help them, but we have to be patient. And it might be that you do some of these techniques and you get calm and then you have to wait an hour or half a day or a day until they sidle up to you while you're putting the washing out and go, you know, yesterday, at which point you dump the washing and you turn around and say, Yes, darling. So these are the ideas for the immediate moment where they are showing anxiety. There is, you're feeling very anxious, name the emotion. I can see you're feeling anxious. I can see you're feeling upset if you don't think they will understand anxious, depending on their age and their emotional ability. You know them. Do you want to try breathing with me? Here's what I do when I feel anxious. Do you want to hold hands? And if they do, great. If they don't, fine. This is what I do. I breathe in. I breathe out and I let my shoulders drop. Do you want to breathe with me? And you can take them through a few deep breaths. 
And then when they've done a few deep breaths, well, you look much calmer now. Do you want to share with me? Would you like to talk? Here we go. So we have this. Uh, my other one is uh, that I read, again, this is from, you know your children, you know what works. So hopefully you're going, oh, I'll keep that. Mm, maybe one day when they're older. So another idea that I read about was allotting time to worry. Now, I used to work in, well, you probably all know by now, I was a primary school teacher, and I worked mostly with 7 to 11, so Key Stage 2, upper Key Stage 2, this is uh, 10 and 11. I did my time in early years <laughs> and realised I'm not cut out for that. So I would say if your kid is about 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, this, this would work, but younger than that, perhaps it won't, but again, it might, you can change it. So giving time to worry. So if they are feeling swamped by loads of things, which right now, it's kind of a, a sensible reaction to the world. You know, it's not a bad thing to feel this anxiety. It's not pleasant, but you know, when we have, school's really scary. I don't know what's gonna go on when I go to school. You can't take me to the gate. I'm scared that, uh, you know, a family member might die. I might have coronavirus and be passing it on. How do I know? Oh, going to the shops is a bit scary. We have to wear masks. I don't like them. I can't hear people properly. I can't see when you smoke. And all of these things, they build up. And if you uh, if you have a, a worrier in your house, or it works with us, I do this sometimes in a journal, just set aside, say 15 minutes, and go, okay, hit me with them all and then just write them down on a post-it note, scrap of paper, a journal, whatever. Just get them all out because a lot of the times, naming the monster takes away its power. Write them all down, write them all down, write them all down. And then what you can do, this particularly is useful for in the evening if, you know, if they can't sleep, write it all down, no problem solving from you. We, they don't need us for that. Later on they may, but initially in the time to worry, it's, it's a proper technique in the time to worry it's just get it out get it out get it out and then you can close the book on it or you can you know say you've got post-it notes i've read a uh, thing where a family it's brilliant again it might not work for you but it does work for them they have it on post-it notes on the wall they call it the worry wall and for 15 minutes every day they just write them up and stick them up stick them up stick them up and then at bedtime they go okay we've done the worrying now Let's pop it in the box and then they put it in a worry box and then they close the lid. And the children go, Oh, I feel better now I got that out. And then they carry on. It is incredibly powerful. Uh, I know uh, grown ups who do something similar where they write it all down. And again, I've done another video on Ho Opono Pono, as in the, the ancient Hawaiian prayer for release. Uh, I cross things out as I've done, as I go through, and then I visualise, I draw and I visualise a dandelion. <sighs> and as I breathe out, I can just feel everything just floating away on the breeze. It's gone. And your heart feels lighter. I know other people who burn stuff. <laughs> uh, I would shy away from doing that with your children, but if you want to do it on your own time when they've gone to bed, knock yourself out, that's also very, very powerful. Um, if you have, say, a fireplace, you might want to do that with your, you know, your children. Say, like, yeah, throw it on the fire now. But, you, you know, fire safety, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't model that. But you can imagine a dandelion and you could talk them through it. Go, breathe in. Think of all of your worries now. Blowing away like dandelion seeds on the air and they're gone. And it's very relaxing. Um... Number three is you could talk about examples of, say it's a scary thing, say about, say going back to school. This is another reason I'm doing this today because I know that um, kids in Vietnam are going back to school tomorrow and kids in, is it the 8th of March or something like that? Somebody, if you want my quarantine, <laughs> I think it's the day, I know it changes, you know, all, I think it changes all the time, but I know in the UK that the kids are basically about to go back to school. So you could give them examples of where they have done the hard thing. This is a really empowering statement. And if you just take this away, that's great. From this whole, you know, probably uh, it's scheduled to be about 45 minutes to say, yeah, it is hard. Yeah, it is scary. You can do hard things. 
you've done hard things. Do you remember that time when we were on holiday and you had that zip wire and you were really scared to go down it and, and you did it? And can you remember you felt amazing when you'd done it? And you went all the way back and you did it again and again and again. And that was scary and that was hard. And you did it. And you can give them examples. Or, or even, do you remember your first day of school? Ever, when you were little and you were really nervous. And then you did it and you made some friends. And you can give them examples of where they have overcome scary things. That might help. Number four is, uh, it's not an immediate technique. It's a general thing to bed in. I talked yesterday about how our words become our children's inner monologues. And, and that that requires us to be very conscious in the way that we talk about ourselves. So when we say like, oh, I'm such an idiot, they hear that, and then the next time they do something, like forget their keys or, or their you know, school ID card or whatever, they are more likely, because they've seen it model from us, to go, oh, I'm such an idiot. So we, this is about us modeling. So in that case, it's us modeling compassion. Oh, I'm really frustrated because I forgot my, I have a key card. Oh, I'm really frustrated because I forgot my key card. <sighs> Oh, well, next time I'll try and remember. Because that's what we want our children to do when they forget things. We don't want our kids beating ourselves up. And do you know what? We don't deserve to be beaten up by ourselves for forgetting small things. And in terms of the anxiety and feeling fear, we can... This is about changing our whole home culture. This is where I talk about being a leader in your family. This is us saying, oh, I've got a new got a new job and tomorrow is my first day I'm feeling a bit nervous you know I'm trying really hard to stay positive because I am feeling a bit anxious about my first job like I don't know where you know I have to go to reception and then someone's going to pick me up and take me to my desk and I'm a bit nervous about that and then you know and then when you come home oh it was wonderful you know it was an amazing thing and, and thank you for believing in me because it helped me have faith in myself so this is us modeling to them, I guess, self-love and self-compassion. It's okay to feel nervous. It's a sign. And, you know, perhaps in the story of the night before the new job, you can talk through with them, you know, I think I'm going to pack my bag now before I go to sleep because then everything's there and I won't worry in the morning. So you are modeling fear is okay, anxiety is okay. These are all human things and and just responses to the world, and I can empower myself to do something about it. Ta -da. And the more that you empower them by your example, your conscious example, the more they will be empowered at some later point when they feel anxious, because we are all going to feel anxious at some point in our lives, and we need to teach our children and ourselves, and ourselves with loving compassion that Anxiety and nerves and fear is a sign that something is not right or needs attention. It's not negative, it's not shameful, it just is. And we can be aware of ourselves. And number five, this is my last thing for the immediate situation where your child is displaying anxiety. Um, taking control. That if, uh, so the example that I read about was uh, a child who was nervous about somebody breaking in. Um, who knows what that story is? Sometimes it's just something they've seen on a film, and that they can take steps, do something to stop that. So, locking the doors, even though that could be part of their nighttime routine, locking the doors, they're doing it, they are being empowered. Uh, you know, the old adage of the monster spray, where you can spray it around your bedroom. I actually have. Um, this is the mosquito spray that we all use. It's actually just lavender oil, <laughs> but mozzies hate it. And um, one of my children is, bless him, he's very anxious, uh, but he he's also apparently very tasty. Bless him, he got that from me as well. And um, when we go out, if there's any sand or any running water, so basically mosquitoes, he gets anxious because he knows that's where they live. So we have this, I have this in my bag all the time. 
hilariously, it's actually just in, in the meeting room. <laughs> So life here. Uh, so whenever we go out, he sprays himself. I mean, it's good practice anyway. But if uh, sometimes if he goes into a sand pit, he gets nervous, and I just give it to him, and he goes, "Thank you, I feel all right now." And off he goes because he has power. He's four, by the way. You know, he has the power with that. Things like if you're worried about your uh, family, sending them a letter just to say that you love them. That's giving them ownership over it in some way. So um, these are some ways that we can support our children. I'm moving over to, don't worry because I'm going to talk through it if you, you know, if you don't have it because I only posted it, whoop, I only posted it up, you know, like 4.55pm here before a 5 o'clock start. So this is my sheet supporting a child through anxiety. Uh, I can only print black and white, but it, it, it's purple. Uh, it is... I will just read it quickly. So it's just me saying it's awful watching them suffer. But you can remember for you as the parent and the loved one, parent, carer, teacher, whatever, you can you can remind yourself and you can remind the children this is a feeling, this is a sign that we need to listen to so that we can change things. It won't last forever. Here is my caveat. If it is lasting forever, if it is not lifting, if nothing that you are doing is lifting it, this is the point where you go to the doctors and they do maybe maybe they do a blood test or something and you know just check that you're not. I mean, low mood is linked to so many deficiencies like iron deficiency or vitamin D deficiency. It could be something that requires medication, it could be a sign of something else. So that's not this. But it is actually good because if you're listening to your body and you're listening to your feelings and it's telling you something's not right, something's not right, and you're trying you kind know, of standard therapeutic, really useful techniques and they're not working, well, good. Congratulations, because you are really listening and going, oh, it's not working. I actually think I need to take it a step further and I am going to see someone. So that's that. But these are my uh, one, two, three, four, five. Things. So A is for accept. Accept it's happening because when we try and be not anxious, this is where I was saying, I know it was funny, but to say like, don't panic or calm down, doesn't work. <laughs> Why does it not work? Because there is a root cause to this feeling and just burying it isn't going to help. Many of us have been socialized or parented in our own youth to not accept our feelings, which is why we can't listen to our feelings. I have a YouTube, <laughs> I have a YouTube channel. I need to stop saying that and laughing. I have a YouTube channel and on it is all the videos that I've ever done because I just save them and put them in one place because nobody wants to scroll through somebody's Facebook or groups and find them. So uh, on there, there is a video about codependency, which is when we are unable, well, amongst many, many other things in this context, when we are unable to tell people how we feel because we're worried about their response. The codependency one is a good watch. I think it should be mandatory watch and mandatory reading for everyone in the world. So yeah, accepting, it sounds so, it sounds so simple and it is, and it's not easy. So just accepting it, okay, there is anxiety here. I'm feeling anxious. Oh, you're feeling anxious, I think, because I can tell by the way you're behaving. You know, I can see, I can see, you know, you're saying your tummy hurts. That is actually a sign of anxiety. Or, oh, you're saying that you're often feeling that things will never be happy again. That can be a sign that you're feeling a thing called anxiety. Oh, you're feeling angry and sad all the time. You're feeling worried about so many things. Oh, this is a sign of anxiety. It's just acknowledging it. That it's so often overlooked, but it's so powerful. Just accepting it. And, and I've actually put in, in this crib sheet, this is why I've done it as a, an infographic, so you could just print it off at home. Um, so like a quote for each thing that you can say because you know when it's new a script is really helpful 
So I see you're showing some of the signs of anxiety. You could tailor it like I just did. That's part of being human. So you've accepted it. There's no shame. It just is. That's part of being human. Uh, F is for feel. Again, go back to the codependency video. <laughs> we have, we being humans, we being children of the 70s, 80s, 90s, we people have been for so many years divorced from our feelings. We've been taught not to feel them because, uh, well, because it makes people around us feel awkward, <laughs> to be honest. Because it's sad sometimes, because it's scary, because it can feel overwhelming, because feelings are big. And when you're a teenager and you're you know, biologically predisposed to these big mood swings already, but you've got so much going on, feelings are big. I still remember from being a teenager, like feelings punching me in the face, it felt like, for really young children. Feelings are scary, especially if they don't have the vocabulary to, to name it. It's just this scary like river sweeping them along and it can be really horrible. And isn't it easier then, or doesn't it feel easier just to go like, no, 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 don't want it, don't want it, don't want it, don't want it. Of course, how is that going to solve anything? It's not. So we we adults need to train ourselves to feel our own emotions, which, by the way, is simple but not easy. And, and we can give our children the gift of accepting their feelings and allowing them space to feel it. This is what hold space, one of the many things that hold space means. So I've written, provide space to feel emotions, teach the child that these are sometimes scary feelings and they're a way of our body and mind telling us that, um, that something's not right. And that's a positive thing because we can then listen to ourselves. So they might want to draw a picture. They might not be able to talk. Like they might not, I'm thinking younger ones, they might not know the words for what they're feeling, but they might be able to draw your picture they might not be able to talk to you. They might want to write it down. Personally, uh, my teenage self and my adult self, I write all the time. Uh, most of you know already I'm dyslexic. My writing is disgusting. <laughs> Fine with that. <laughs> I could put a lot more effort in, but actually even when I'm journaling and, I, and it gets really, really scratchy, like if I'm slow, uh, my writing can be neat. So just say to them, just get it down, especially for, you know, at school they're taught, you know, handwriting is so important, and of course handwriting is important in the world, but if you are just getting your feelings out, who cares if you can read it later, it doesn't matter, just uh, so get it out, um, they might want to go uh, and punch a pillow and get their feelings out, they might want to, to shout and get their feelings out, they might just have like the odd word like rubbish, 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 and if that is how they get this feeling out, and they, no, not get through, to go through the feeling, to feel the feeling, and then to finish and just go, oh, this is so important to grown-ups and to children, and it is a gift. So, and, and I put as the quote here for a thing that we can say, is it's okay to feel these emotions, you're safe. Like I just said, being swept on, swept along by huge waves of grief or anger or sadness or fear, it is scary. So for your loved, cherished adult to say to you, I'm here with you, it's okay for you to feel that way. It's okay to cry. It's okay to punch a pillow. It's okay to, within reason, kick things, you know, not your sister, not the furniture, but it's okay for you to go out and jump up and down and I don't know, pull grass up or whatever. It is safe. Um, T is for tell. To encourage them to tell somebody. So it, what we what we want, I mean, ideal world, we wouldn't feel anxious. This is the real world. We're going to feel anxious sometimes. And actually, sometimes if we're not feeling anxious, we are not pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone. I'm not talking here about COVID and new school and, and all of that. I'm talking about the anxiety of starting a new job. Am I good enough? Can I do it? Doing a live video training. <laughs> you know, 
I, I could easily have not done this. I could easily have turned this into a series of blog posts. But I pushed myself to do it and I felt a bit anxious. This is where I am growing as a person. And, you know, if you're going for a promotion, yes, it might make you feel anxious. But what we want is for people to embrace that and go with it. And, you know, grow and live a fulfilled life. So the T is to tell, to tell someone, to encourage them. You know, I'm really proud of you for telling me this. It's a really great thing that you reached out because now we can work through this together and I'm on your side. If you ever do feel like this again, then you can always talk to me. Anytime, any place, you can always talk to me. You can talk to your grandma, you can talk to your teacher, you can talk to whoever. So encouraging them to share it because again, I said this right at the start, bringing things out into the light is it takes away their power, it makes them less scary, and it enables us to seek support in order to deal with whatever is the root of the anxiety. So sharing is key, and to encourage our child, there is no shame when you feel anxious, there is no guilt to feeling like this, you know, my mum, like my mum is a nurse, and I'm really proud of her, and I love what she's doing, I can't tell her that I feel scared about that. She'll feel bad. So we we need to create a space where we say, no matter what you think, even if, even if you think I don't want to hear it, I do. Because if it is something that upsets you, I need and I want to hear it because your thoughts are important to me. Because our kids, especially if you have a highly sensitive child, or a thoughtful child, sometimes they try and protect us. So they hold on to things out of worry for us. And they truly, again, I did another video on this about just tell people you love them because they don't know unless you tell them. And if you want your kids to, to speak to you, you need to tell them often and sincerely, I am always here if you want to speak. There is no shame, there is no guilt, there is no anger, even if I don't want to hear it, or even if you think I don't want to hear it, I do, because if it matters to you, it matters to me. I'm here anytime. We have to tell them. Uh, so I've also put that you could come up with a code. Now, I've done this in school with anxious children or selective mutes, where they couldn't even tell me, because they had this anxiety, they couldn't even tell me if they wanted to go to so one of the things that we did is they always had a card and it was a picture and it wasn't even like sometimes it was a Makaton picture of you know go to toilet and sometimes they didn't want to share that they had that function they didn't want everyone to know so it had even just a star but I knew and they knew and the TA knew and maybe one special trusted friend in the class knew if that was appropriate what this star card meant so the child would come up to me and go and I'd nod and off they go, problem solved. Now you could come up with something like that because not everybody is able to, as an adult or as a child, say, mom, I'm having some feelings. Daddy, I'm really anxious right now. I don't know what to do. So it might be, I've got some, I'll read the ideas. Um, so you come up with a code where they give you like a star card or a picture or even like a Batman, a Batmobile or whatever. Um, and they could give you that, or they could stick it on your bedroom door or something. Uh, putting a peg on a line, so you could have like a, a, a thread on a door, and they could just clip a peg on it, and that is your sign. So that is their way. We want to make it really easy for them to reach out to us. Just so easy, so they could do that and walk off. Even if you're at work or something, they could do that, and then when you come home, you see it, and then you can just go, I've seen the peg. We'll find a quiet moment after dinner, okay? And then they know because they've, you no, not they've found a way. You, as the leader in your family, have created a way for your child in a non-threatening, supportive, safe way to tell you something's not right with me. I need you. This is how we are connected. And it doesn't have to be a big deal where we will have to talk face to face because most people don't want to do that. Um, another idea is leaving a certain toy in a certain place. So when you put that unicorn on my pillow, I know that you want to talk about something and I will find a space. And then of course, when you see it, 
even if it's not a space where you can talk right now, because, you know, I have three kids, I work, my husband works, you can't always drop everything, you know, or you've got a delivery or something, you can't, you just can't, but you can say, hey honey, I've noted the unicorns on my pillow, we'll find a quiet space later, okay? And already their anxiety will be dropping, because they know that you've seen them, they know that they are safe, they know that they are loved, because... You, as the leader in your family, this is the great thing about it. You have so much power for good and to lead your family in this way. You have created an environment, a physical structure, where they can reach out to you with no fear and limited interaction. It's amazing. And then you can just go, I see you. I love you. You're safe. We will make it better later. Um, yeah, a certain toy in a certain place. Uh, so this way they may feel safer reaching out. And I've put it, you know, quotes, what I just said before, you can talk to me anytime, no matter what I am doing, I am always here to listen to. Say it once a week, they can't hear it enough because the time when they do need to speak to you is probably the time when they, they doubt the most if they can speak to you. Humans are like that. It's not about you. <laughs> but what you can do is make it ridiculously easy to speak to you. You can make them roll their eyes. I'm always here for you. Oh, God. Do you know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they treat you like that because they've heard it. And then in two years' time, when somebody really hurts them or they're really, really scared or they've been made to feel uncomfortable by somebody else, they will come to you because they will remember that two years ago, you were really embarrassing in the kitchen and you made it painfully clear that you would listen to them. Uh, e, it's a bit of a cheat. It's two. <laughs> Empower and validate. So empowering them by saying, this is a feeling. We already talked about this. This is a feeling. It's called anxiety. It's a sign that something's not right. You have the power to listen to yourself using your intuition and to realize, okay, something's not right, let's work through it. So telling them their importance of their feelings are very important to you and to them, and that you will be honored to listen to them. Not just, all right, I'll find some time for you, but I am honored if you will speak to me, because frankly, we are. We don't own them. They don't belong to us. If they want to share their heart with us, we are so. We are honoured. And when you say to them, I'm honoured if you want to speak to me, they feel that and they feel good and they feel powerful and respected. This is the gift that we can give our children from just a few words. It's incredible. Um, so and to validate is when they do talk, listen, with your mouth closed. <laughs> I'm a teacher. This. I've had to unlearn so much stuff through home educating my children and through trying, well, going into conscious parenting and trying to be this parent myself. It's an ongoing process because we want to fix it because we love our children. When they're 25, they'll be our babies. You know, when they're three, they're our babies. When they're eight, they're our babies. And anything that hurts them needs to be squashed because we love them. But if we immediately solve their problems every single time, we disempower them. This is what I mean by empower and validate. If we go, oh, well, maybe you could just pack your bag the night before. We've taken away the opportunity for them to come to that conclusion themselves. And they probably would have. Or you could have done a, do you know what I do when I've got something big the next day? I pack my bag the night before. And then, and then they go, I'm going to pack my bag. And then they've had that idea and they feel amazing and empowered. So to validate is you just empathizing and showing, I hear you, I love you, I respect you. Even if when they say things that it's hard for us to hear, like sometimes I really, really hate my brother and I wish he'd just go and live somewhere else. This is hard to hear. But if we immediately jump in with, seriously, why would you even say that? That's a horrible thing to say. Here's your brother, which is our knee-jerk response. This is that difference between reacting and 
responding. What does this child need from me right now? Oh, I see that's frustrating. It must not be very nice to feel like that about your own brother. Da da, you have validated. I hear that you're really upset right now. Validated. So we just, and, and the power, there's this book, oh, I don't have it on me, I have it uh, upstairs on my desk, um, how to talk uh, so kids will listen. And how to listen so kids will talk. And uh, <laughs> one of the things that they talk about is the power of the, hmm, hmm, I see, I see. That's all they want from us. This is validating them. It's giving their words the worth that they deserve. We're not taking away from them. Uh, even though we want to solve their problems. Because actually, genuinely, when stuff like this happens, you can, you have a right to later on go and journal this yourself and write, I can't believe my kid just said that about his brother. I'm so upset that that happened. I feel really upset. I feel like I've done something to make them hate each other. By the way, you haven't. But it's okay to feel like that. Aha, validated you. It's okay to feel like that sometimes. It's part of being human. You are totally entitled, after the kid's gone to bed, to go and have a little cry because you hadn't realised that they've been worried about their grandma dying all along. And this kind of thing, when they tell us, sometimes it hurts. And they don't need to know that it hurts us right in that moment. This is the part of being a conscious leader in your family. This is knowing, like... Okay, I'm not going to react, I'm going to take a breath, I'm going to pause, I'm going to respond with what my child needs right now. And later on, I'm going to cry into my cup of tea, because I need to. And this is you responding to yourself, which actually is really powerful as well. Um, so yeah, and I've written as my ideas for things you can say, I understand now how this makes you feel that way. You know, if they're saying school makes me feel really anxious because, you know, there's this and this and this and you can't come in and I don't know where my bag goes and I'm in a different class now and uh, there's someone in my bubble that I don't really like and blah, 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 blah. And you could just say, I understand now how all of this makes you feel this way. Could you imagine if somebody said that to you as a kid? Could you imagine if somebody says that to you now? I'd be like, yeah, man, you get me, you hear me. I feel good or... Something really simple, I read somewhere, it's called, you know, like in America, they have uh, sports casters, they call it sports casting, who, who just, you know, tell you what's going on, or if you've ever, I never got on with it, listening to a football match on the radio, like, I can't. maybe because I'm dyslexic and I can't see what's happening from the words, but I don't understand why people do that, um, but just commentating, I see that's really hurting you, it, it's like, say, what was that catchphrase, say what you see. I see you're feeling really sad about that. This is validating. And it might feel very, very awkward if you've not done it before. It probably feels really strange if nobody's ever done it for you. Um, fact is, most of us who are adult parents of young children right now, because of when we grew up, this was never modelled because it wasn't taught to our parents. Our parents aren't bad people for not doing that. They just didn't know. So this is going to be new literally just say what you see i see your feeling i see there's lots of different things going on here and it's making you feel they don't need you to do anything they just need you to hear them and you show that you've heard them by summing up what they say but not adding anything else this is validation um they might cry and it might be crap because seeing your child cry is horrible. And the thing is that if they are worried about somebody dying, like many of us adults are, we're worried about our family and our friends being sick, and we're worried about the future of the world, we're worried about our jobs, and kids pick up on this. And, you know, older kids, even even the 7 to 11 range, certainly the, the teen age, they, they do think about things like that because they are at this, you know, embryonic understanding of the world and jobs and money and things. And uh, and they might have big feelings and all we do is hug them. And by some time they try to go and cry themselves or to think it through or to go for a walk or do something for us. I mean, basically, do this on yourself. That's what it's for. Or Ho'oponopono. Do that for yourself. 
Um, I have a, a very, very good friend. I mean, like I named my child after her and she does Ho'oponopono in a different form in a prayer with her son, who's oh, seven, bad breath, bad breath. Um, you know, he's seven or eight. <laughs> I can't remember. And, um, and they do this in the evenings. This is the gift that she gives him of going through Ho'oponopono, but not fully just saying, thank you for the lessons I learned today. Please forgive me for anything that I've done or when I've held myself back today. Um, I love you. I mean, they, they, they talk through this in the evening. This is validating. And R is the last one, which is recognize the signs. Now, this is one of those things that I recommend you do. Like it's a it's an activity that you do. Uh, you could do it on like a piece of paper, or brainstorm. You might not do all of these in one go. So you might get to the empathy, um, so the empower and the validate, and they might cry and then they might feel better. And then it's not really appropriate, you know, or they fall asleep even because they've had this huge release and then they just go, oh, I'm going to bed now. And, and that's fine, you don't need to keep going through. Um, but at a later point, or, I mean, you could just do this for no reason, this recognize the signs. You know, well, I've been thinking about how, you know, with everything going on, sometimes we feel a bit anxious and sometimes I do. So I just wanted to share, these are the things, or let's have a think about the things that make us feel anxious or worried. And, um, Again, this is on the sheet, so you can read it at leisure. But so write down either on one piece of paper, or I'm a big paper thinker, so I would use three pieces of paper for this. The signs that we talked about way at the start of this hour. Uh, physical things, uh, thoughts, like intrusive thoughts, and feelings. So I feel sad, I feel down, I feel frustrated, I feel annoyed at myself, I feel like I'm not getting anywhere. Thoughts, I just keep thinking it's never going to get better. I think everybody's watching me. I think I'm messing it up. Thoughts and, uh, you know, the physical, like I have tummy ache, I need to go to the toilet a lot. Uh, I have a dry mouth. I feel sick. I have a headache. My muscles are tight and my shoulders hurt. Talk about that. I mean, like literally overtly teach it to your children because we didn't learn it. We didn't learn it. And I know a lot of people say, this is my teacher hat back on. A lot of people are like, oh, they should learn it in school. But the thing is, there is so much going on right now. And everybody says, oh, they should learn that in school. Oh, they should learn about finance at school. Oh, they should learn basic car maintenance at school. Oh, they should learn to regulate their emotions at school. Oh, they should learn this. And, and you know, on top, they've got to learn to read, write, um, have scientific thinking, critical thinking, all of these things. It might not happen. And, of course, many teachers want to teach it but can't right now it's virtually impossible to teach things like these soft skills these eq emotional it's q quota anyway let's go for emotional intelligence things um at, at school or online through zoom it's not possible but you can teach your kids you could even get some other kids around one day when you can do that and do this session and i've written the thing that you can say, now you know what to look out for. You have the power to deal with this if it happens again. And then you can recap all the things you do. So, you know, you just put the unicorn on my pillow, and I know. You can put the peg on that string in the kitchen, and I know. And then we will talk it through together. Um, if you're ever feeling like this, you know that you could just write it down, or you can draw a picture, or you can go find a pillow and punch it you know what to do now and they will feel really powerful the next time it inevitably happens even if it's not for a short time even if it's a year later when they you know come into the gcse years and they're feeling anxious and and you know all of a sudden you go into the kitchen to prep dinner and there's a peg on a string that you forgot about and you go oh my goodness okay okay this is good off we go and it is good it's obviously less desirable that your child is feeling not happy emotions but it is good it's a good thing that they reach out to you and you I'm going to end it now because we've gone up to an hour which is amazing you have the power to support your child through whatever they feel there are some 
techniques. I was going to say tricks there, and it's not tricks, it's techniques. We were not born knowing this. We did not give birth, however that happened, or, you know, when you have a, a baby who was adopted or a young person that was adopted, you know, we don't, they don't come to us and then, you know, we stand still and we download all the information from the heavens of how to parent. This is not what happens. Nobody knows what to, seriously, nobody knows what to do. <laughs> but you have the power to be skilled up. This is one of those things. This is why I do what I do. Because people need, whoop, people need the, people need help. I needed help. All the thinkers needed help. And there are ways, uh, there are things that help. So you can watch this video. I will download it and stick it on YouTube uh, when I can get into my group. This and this video will go into the guide section. You can send me a message. I am here. Um, I don't check my messages all the time. I check them morning, lunchtime, evening. I try and respond as quickly as I can, but you know, I. I home educate my kids and things, so I try and ring fence my time so I'm there when I'm there and I'm at work when I'm at work, and that works better for us. So um, but send me a message, reach out if you need support because I am here, this is what I do. It's not a burden to reach out. This is my life and I love it. I love knowing that I can help people, help kids that will never even know that I exist. I don't know why I love that so much, but I really love knowing that it's rippling out and you know if you want to share this with somebody or tag them in the video please do because well get it out get the message out and um, if you want to share this please share it and then just refer them onto the the group or send them to my profile or something since the group is frustrating at the moment thank you so much for your time uh, if you are able to and you have time if you would just write in the comments what your takeaway is from today that would be awesome. And and it helps me in creating the next, you know, the next training, because I do like to do a big Sunday training every week. Good luck. You can do this, you have power. And if you don't get it exactly right, put your hand on your heart, give yourself compassion. You are trying, you are enough, you are the leader in your family.